Now, please welcome the Vegas Chamber President and CEO, Mayor Betsy Wolf. Thank you so much, Carlos, and thank you everybody for joining us today. And please excuse our technical difficulties. Sometimes those things just happen. But we're so excited to be here today because we have some great new information to share with you about some possible funding that, that uh, you can apply for. So um, we'll be joined today by Clark County Commissioner Justin Jones and Director of Community and Economic Development, Ms. Shani Coleman. Uh, they're going to give us an update on the creation of several grant funds by Clark County to help our small businesses uh, that have been, of course, been impacted by COVID-19. Commissioner Jones and Director Coleman are, are going to give us some information about things like the application process, criteria to apply, and then funding levels available to small businesses located throughout Clark County. Before I uh, introduce our speakers, I want to highlight just a couple of chamber programs for you, a couple of things you're not going to want to miss out on. Um, applications for the Chamber's Leadership Las Vegas program are open, but they are due soon, so you're going to want to keep that in mind. That's a 10-month program that gives you a deeper understanding of Southern Nevada so that you can become a more insightful leader, a community leader. Applications are due on June 11th, so go to leadership.vegas to apply for those. Also, mark your calendar because on Monday, June 15th, the Vegas Chamber is going to be hosting an interview with Wynn Resort CEO Matt Maddox. Um, Matt's going to talk about uh, the Wynn Resort's reopening, social distancing within the resort, and give us a first-hand, behind-the-scenes glimpse into the inner workings of Wynn Resorts and what's happening there. So they truly have been a leader um, in Southern Nevada, and we appreciate that. So we look forward to speaking with Mr. Maddox on June 15th. And now it is my distinct honor and pleasure to welcome our two guests today, Clark County Commissioner, Mr. Justin Jones, and again, Shani Coleman, Director of Community and Economic Development for Clark County as well. Thank you both for joining us today. Thank you so much, Mary Beth. I uh, really appreciate everything that the Chamber has been doing throughout this COVID-19 health crisis to provide information, not to uh, just its members, but to the entire public, to all small business owners on, on how to address the, the concerns, the economic concerns and the health care concerns. Uh, we appreciate all that you guys are doing. Um, you guys are truly a partner with the county and with our community uh, to make sure that we we weather this storm as as well as we can uh, as we can. So we appreciate all of the webinars that you have been doing to ensure that businesses have had access to federal funds, uh, PPP and, and other funds. Uh, and we appreciate uh, the opportunity to partner with you on uh, additional funding through the CARES Act. Um, so, as, as you may know, uh, the CARES Act uh, allowed for uh, monies to be distributed to certain jurisdictions of over 500,000 uh, across the country. And uh, so, Clark County was allotted $295 million in CARES Act funds. And one of the uses that the CARES Act can be uh, used for, for is to support small businesses that were affected uh, by the COVID-19 health crisis. And so, working with Shawnee, who, who will... Uh, who will uh, follow up here in a few minutes. We were able to identify a need in our community uh, and, and devoted $21.5 million of our CARES Act funds to uh, addressing the needs of our small business community. Um, and these are in addition to some of the other programs that, that obviously uh, are being used to, to help our small business owners. Um, working with, with Shawnee and, and with the County Commission, uh, we were able to identify three different types of programs. Uh, to try and meet the needs of the community. We've worked very closely in partnership with the chamber and with several of the other uh, business chambers in our community uh, to make sure that we're doing it in, in a way that is beneficial to those that uh, are most in need. And so one of the, the, the main criteria for these grants is that the business not have received other types of federal funds. We know that uh, there were many businesses that were able to take advantage of PPP and, and other funds uh, quickly, um, but many others who were not able to take advantage of, of the dollars in, in any way. And so we want to make sure that we focused on those that, that were not able to take advantage of other types of federal programs. Uh, and so in identifying uh, the types of programming that we wanted to uh, make available, uh, we, we uh, identified a, a small business stabilization grant um, and two other uh, grant programs uh, to make them available to those in the community. 
for the stabilization grant, uh, Sean will go over some of the criteria uh, that are involved in, in that program. Um, and uh, the other two programs for uh, rent assistance um, and for PPE and, and other types of uh, uh, things that, that businesses can use within uh, their property to adjust to the healthcare crisis uh, are critical. Um, we are also working closely uh, with other partners uh, with the BCAUSE program, which provides grants to economically disadvantaged businesses. Uh, and also with the Las Vegas Global Economic Alliance uh, and the uh, and with our pro bono uh, partners to make sure that our businesses have access to legal services and, and to the business information network that's been so cru crucial through this entire process. Uh, so with that, I'm going to turn over some some time to, to Shawnee to give a little bit more detailed analysis of the three programs and some of the criteria that are involved. Wonderful. Uh, Mary Beth, thank you so much for having me on to today's program. Um, as Commissioner Jones mentioned, uh, we work very hard to put together programs um, that we um, felt would touch um, a good portion of Clark County um, constituents out there uh, based on things that we were hearing from the community. Um, and so as Commissioner Jones pointed out, um, while uh, some businesses were able to tap into some of the federal dollars through SBA directly, um, we know that there were a number of businesses that were not. And so these three programs are really designed for small businesses. So the range um, or the cap on the employee size for all of these programs are 20 employees. Um, we do include sole proprietors. So from one to 20 employees are eligible for the programs. Um, some of the programs have slightly different criteria based on what they do. Um, so the first one I'll start with is the uh, Small Business Stabilization Grant. Um, this is the first one that's gonna be rolled out. Um, applications will likely be available um, by the end of this week on the website. Um, and then we will have an application window, um, probably be open for a week where we will accept applicate, well, Clark County will accept applications um, for the, the program. But this particular program provides working capital. So it's, it's the most flexible and the most generous of all of the programs that we have. Um, the size of the working capital is based on the employee count. So businesses between one and four, so that includes a sole proprietor or a home-based business, businesses between one and four employees can get up to $5,000, and businesses between five and 20 employees can get up to 20, uh, I mean, up to $10,000, 20 employees up to $10,000. Um, so again, um, have 20 employees or less, sole proprietors and home-based businesses can participate in this program. Um, they must have an active business license, so we'll be checking business license. Doesn't necessarily have to be a Clark County business license um, because businesses in jurisdictions such as Henderson and North Las Vegas uh, may apply for this particular grant, so they just need to have an active business license. Um, again, we're trying to touch businesses that have not received anything, any type of support fund. So um, we're asking only for those that have not received uh, federal dollars um, and not anticipate receiving money from um, the other jurisdictions. So uh, we want to avoid double dipping, but we know um, some of the jurisdictions such as Henderson and North Las Vegas have established some of their own programs, albeit much smarter, um, much smaller than the county's program but we wanna avoid double dipping. So if you are participating in City of Henderson's program, uh, then we ask that you um, not participate in these programs at, at the moment. Um, must be in business for at least six months. So um, we're, we're giving a lot of leeway there. I know a lot of programs require at least a year or two years. We only require that you've been in business for six months prior to March 15th. Um, and obviously that you've had a financial hardship. Um, you don't have any tax liens or anything like that. And so um, this, again, is the most flexible. This program will be released before the other two programs. So we anticipate the application to be on Clark County's website uh, by the end of this week. 
and we will likely have an application acceptance period um, that starts sometime um, late mid to late next week and we'll leave that open for about uh, a week we will gather all of the applications um, we want to support businesses that um, were viable and uh, and had success before COVID struck. So one of the things that we'll be doing just to kind of objectively look at who gets funding and who doesn't, there is a, a scoring criteria. Businesses can score between zero and 30 points, but basically it looks at things as how long the business has been operating, how many employees they have, what their, their, their net revenues look like, what type of debt do they have, if they're a disadvantaged business. And based on that scoring criteria, those obviously in the top tier will be funded first. Um, we understand that those businesses um, are likely to have been successful and are likely to continue to succeed if they are provided with these grant dollars. And so we wanna support those businesses. Um, so once we receive the applications, we will be reviewing all of the applications. We will be scoring them. Um, applicants will see will receive an email letter regarding a notice of determination, whether they'll receive the grants or whether um, whether there's a reason why uh, they they weren't eligible for the grant. Um, and then we will be getting the money out. So um, that's that's the first program. And here, I'm happy to stop if there's any questions particularly about this grant or Mary Beth do you want me to roll through all three of them and then um, kind of take questions at the end just to clarify Shani a couple of things this first one is called the business small business stabilization grant it's correct. going to roll out the end of this week correct yep and and so we've gotten the criteria from you that was very thorough so thank you and then the Clark County website is where people will be able to go to find information on all three of these. Correct, if they go to clarkcountynv.gov, at the top of the page, they'll see a button that says Econ Dev. If they click on that button, that will take them specifically to the economic development page. And there is a section on that page, if they look on the left-hand uh, side menu, that says economic recovery. And so here they can find um, free public safety posters um, in English and Spanish. So if they have a need to want to print out posters reminding people to wear a mask or wash their hands, they can get that there as well as there will be information on the three grant programs on that page. When we post the application and when it's time to submit the applications, all of that will happen from that same page. Okay, and then just last before I let you go to the next ones, um, you said this is the most flexible, the easiest one to navigate and so forth. I assume um, the requirements, things that documents that people will have to submit uh, are also not terribly onerous, but they certainly will give you what you need and what your crews and teams will need to uh, do your scoring system. Absolutely. Um, if you go to the website now, there's actually a list. It's not a complete list. Um, but if you go to the website now and you pull up the documents related to the grant, you'll see a, a, a short list of documents that they'll need to apply for the grant. So things like obviously the application form, um, they'll need to provide us with a statement of how the funds are used, um, a hardship statement. All of these things are actually in the application. There's a section for that. But other documents that they may want to think about, um, profit and loss uh, or a balance sheet, um, tax returns, um, current debt schedule. Since we're limiting this to businesses, uh, 20 employees or less, they'll need to include a, uh, uh, a payroll schedule so we can confirm the number of employees that they have on staff. Obviously, we need some things to actually process the application. So there is a W-9 form that they'll need to fill out so we can actually distribute funds to them. Um, copies of their active business license. So um, we don't believe it's too onerous. The application itself is only two pages long. Ask for basic contact information um, to provide a list of um, who the business owners are. So, um, and 
when the application is actually available, it will provide a full list of all of the documents and all of the various steps that they'll need to follow to submit an application. Okay, I'll just ask you one question, one more question, and then we'll let you move on to the other two, because I know you have a hard stop at two o'clock, so I just want to be mindful of your time. Um, so um, when you were talking about the uh, 20 employee cap, is that full-time and part-time or just full-time? It's uh, full-time and part-time. Oh, it's both, okay, yeah. excellent. Okay, very good. We'll let you get to the next two just to make sure we get the information out. So the second program we have um, is the, uh, we call it the Protective Retrofit Grant. Um, this is a reimbursement grant, and this grant is really about protecting the public and public health and safety. Um, this grant will reimburse small businesses, same thing, 20 employees or less, small businesses, up to $5,000 for things like if they've had to uh, do a building modification, say they had to install plexiglass, um, or say they wanted to install um, no touch faucets or no touch doors, or if they want to buy thermometers for screening, a one time purchase of PPE, if they need to buy PPE for their employees, this particular grant will cover up to $5,000 of that. Um, the eligibility requirements are very similar um, 20 employees or less, received no federal or city money already, um, uh, have active business license. Um, this one requires a commercial location because it's about keeping uh, the spread of, of COVID down. Um, this is this uh, particular grant can't be used by home-based businesses. Um, because we want to cover as many businesses as possible, you only had to have been in business since March 1st for this particular grant. Um, and so we, we shortened that window from six months to March 1st. Um, so basically two weeks, as long as you've been in business about two weeks before COVID-19 happened, um, you can apply for this particular grant. Also um, have no state, federal or county tax liens. And so um, that's that particular grant. And with that, I'll, I'll, I'll stop for a minute to see if there's any questions regarding that. No, not yet. All Let's right. And then the final program that we have is a rental assistance program. And this um, program was really about uh, attempting to touch two industries at the same time. And so recognizing that while small businesses need support as well, that landlords are also, um, some of them are small businesses and need support. Um, a lot of what happened uh, when businesses were losing revenue they were in a situation where they had to they, they had to make a choice and sometimes rent was the, the item that didn't get paid. Um, and what that does is that shifts the burden of financial responsibility from the business to the landlord because the landlord has financing or they have a mortgage that they have to pay, um, then now they're struggling too. So this particular grant covers both. It will pay up to $10,000 in back rent the back rent is paid directly to the landlord. Um, this particular grant does require the landlord to participate. Since we're paying it directly to the landlord, one of the things that we were cognizant of is that sometimes the, the, there may be a time when the $10,000 is a partial rent payment. And so we wanted the landlord to acknowledge that they're receiving a partial rent payment and that they also wouldn't take any additional eviction actions against that tenant if it was a partial payment. So the, the tenant owes $25,000 in rent. Uh, they participate in this program and we pay the landlord $10,000. We didn't want the landlord coming after the tenant for the $15,000 and evicting them the next week. So this requires the landlord to sign an agreement that says, hey, I'm accepting these funds. I understand these funds may be partial payment, but I also acknowledge um, with this acceptance that I will not uh, take any eviction action against the tenant for 90 days. And so we're giving a little bit of comfort um, there as well. Eligibility requirements are similar to the stabilization grant. Again, 20 or less employees 
um, received no federal uh, grant dollars or other city dollars. Um, obviously, it needs to be a commercial location, so no home-based businesses are eligible for this. Been in business for at least six months, have a financial hardship, um, not have any federal, state, or tax liens. And so um, that's the final program that we have. Okay, and Shanna, you said that um, the first one, the Small Business Stabilization Grant, that's coming out this week. What's the timing of two and three? Um, two and three will likely come out two to three weeks after. Um, we wanna go through the Small Business Stabilization Grant just to make sure um, like if there are any tweaks or things that we need to make adjustments for on the other two. So we'll have a little bit of time to do that if we need to. Okay, Commissioner Jones, I have to commend you and the county for uh, coming up with these three plans. I think, um, are these uh, the brainchild of some of you at the county or maybe you looked at best practices like from Utah or places like that, that, that already had some pretty good ideas? How did this come about? I give 100% of the credit to Shawnee for being the brainchild of these programs. <laughs> she, uh, she and I worked early on as we were considering what types of options were there, and uh, she did the laboring or in identifying what would be most beneficial. And uh, we have jointly called uh, the other uh, chambers and business leaders to try and understand them. But uh, Shawnee deserves uh, the, the, the vast majority of the credit for putting these programs together. Um, so thank you, Shawnee. Uh, you know, it's we were very fortunate uh, the, the county didn't have anyone doing economic development. And so we were fortunate to bring Shawnee on uh, a few months ago. And uh, the minute that the COVID-19 happened, she pivoted to doing economic recovery work. And we are so lucky that she was on board before this all started, because frankly, we wouldn't have anybody to do this work but for the fact that uh, she had come on board a few months ago. So we're grateful to have her. Um, I, I love to say that she has a large department that she's managing to do this, but she is a department of one right now. <laughs> so she's doing tremendous work uh, with uh, with very few resources and we're grateful for all she's doing. Um, I did also want to mention uh, in terms of other things we're doing to help these businesses, uh, our, our fantastic uh, our licensing team, business licensing team is working in hand with Shawnee. Uh, to support our, our businesses to make sure that they have as much flexibility as possible. Uh, I mentioned briefly that we're working with legal aid uh, to make sure that our small business owners have the support as they're navigating these programs. Uh, certainly the, the, um, the, the tenant landlord assistance is critical. A lot of these leases are very complicated and we want to make sure that the small business owners have that legal support so they can make sure that they're getting everything they can out of this and, and staying in business for uh, for years to come. And then Shawnee's also worked very closely with the with UNLV uh, and their program for assisting small businesses. And those will be resources that are available uh, to the businesses as they navigate through these programs. Well, Shawnee, you deserve a lot of credit. We didn't know that you have a, a career in economic development in your skill set. Oh, yeah. That, <laughs> I've been doing that for years. I worked at the city of Las Vegas for an economic development for 12 years before the county stole me. So the county got lucky. <laughs> I definitely would agree with that. Just a couple of questions here, maybe before you go to clarify, a lot of folks are asking um, if they already got a PPP loan that they cannot participate in any of these three programs and, and might that change? Um, right now, we're focusing on businesses that have not received any funding. Um, as we go through this process, um, if, there, uh, if we go through the process um, and we are able to fund all the applications that we receive um, that did not receive, uh, that are part of that group that didn't receive any funding, if there are any funds left, we definitely could look at a second round that has some adjusted eligibility requirements. And, and, and just to follow up on that, the, the $295 million that we received at the county, we did an initial allocation of $21.5 million for small business support. And a lot of the dollars have to be used for things that are direct related to health issues, testing, uh, services for, for a homeless population, et cetera. But if it turns out that there are additional dollars available, 
um, then we can certainly make adjustments as we go forward uh, as we see the needs in our community. That would be really helpful because a lot of our members are saying that they only got like, for example, $1,200 from the PPP. And so that really isn't going anywhere for them. So now they're not eligible to apply for these grants. So it's tough. They're in a rock and a hard place because they applied and got funds, but not enough. Right. Okay. Uh, the, the, what, the one other piece of this that we haven't set the criteria on is the VCAUSE piece. We're working with the with the Latin Chamber, the Asian Chamber, and the Urban Chamber on identifying what the criteria for that program will be. And so that's something that we can certainly talk about, whether there is an opportunity to be a little more flexible on, on that. And that's uh, another $750,000. Okay, great. Um, can, can folks apply for all three of these at the same time, or do you have to apply for one at a time? Oh, so that's an interesting question. The Small Business Stabilization Grant, that will be released first. If you are awarded funding under the Small Business Stabilization Grant, you will not be eligible for the rental or the retrofit grant. Um, because the Small Business Stabilization Grant is working capital, and they can use that capital to, do, uh, to take care of the same elements as the other two, we limited that. So um, for the retrofit reimbursement grant, and the rental assistance, those two can be applied for together. Um, you can receive funds under both of those, but the stabilization grant is the only one. If you re receive funds under that, then that would make you ineligible for the other two. Well, and it looks like that there's the most, the most dollars are included in the stabilization grant, or, right. or you have the opportunity to get the most money with that one. Correct. Okay. Another question is, if uh, what if you are self-employed and did not pull a payroll and have no other employees, can you still apply for the rental assistance grant? We are a family-owned small business. Um, the answer to that question is yes. You just have to have a commercial location. So you have to be paying rent to someone else. So sole proprietors are eligible for that grant. They just need to be paying rent to someone else. Okay. Um, the next question is, and I'll just read this, what about companies in the trade show industry? We received, so they did receive PPP funds, but it is, again, not enough to bridge the gap until we can go back to work. As of now, all trade shows are canceled until September. So we're focusing on those businesses that haven't received any type of funding right now. Right. Just as a follow-up, there is uh, we, we did appropriate most of the $21.5 to programs, but there's still... How much do we end up leaving, Shawnee, a million dollars that hasn't been appropriated yet? We have about $700,000 left. So there is some, so we, we may revisit as we see the, the programs roll out. Okay. Another question is, what if the landlord doesn't want to participate and be paid directly by the county? Can I still apply and then pay the landlord and show you the, that the payment was made or prove that the payment was made? Um, the way the payment is designed, the, the way the program is designed, it really requires the landlord to participate um, because part of what the tenant gets from the landlord's participation is that protection. Um, so right now it's designed for both the landlord and the tenant to participate. Okay. Got it. Um, can commercial landlords work with the county proactively to help their tenants seek rental assistance grants? Absolutely. So um, this information was pushed out to organizations like NAOP um, and other commercial real estate uh, uh, um, um, industry organizations. So if they have tenants out there um, that are struggling, um, if the landlord is willing to participate and the tenant is willing to participate, we are willing to help. Okay, and what were those deadlines again for the grants? Um, the first grant, um, again, the application should be available by the end of this week. Um, what we're looking at as far as uh, an application acceptance period will be June 20, June 17th, which is Wednesday, through June 24th. Uh, it may shift a day um, through the 18th and the 25th, but there will be a week a window of a week where uh, businesses 
um, can actually turn in their applications to the county for assistance. Okay, and then on that note, how, <clears throat> how long do you uh, expect it might take to process the applications? Um, it's really going to depend on how many applications we get. We're hoping to keep it down to about two weeks, but if we get a large number of applications that we have to um, review and shift through, then that can obviously extend the time a little bit. Okay, great. Here's an, another question. Um, if a business has applied for PPP uh, or idle, but has not received any confirmation from the SBA or other lenders that they have funds approved for them yet, are they eligible to apply for these funds? So they're in, they're in. Yeah, they're in, in that in between time. So we, we're asking people um, not to apply if they have received notification that they're going to receive funds and they just haven't received them yet. Um, one of the things that the business will have to do um, as part of the application package is they'll have to um, sign a certification of, of funds. And that just helps us understand. Um, and if the business, does receive funds from a city or federal government if they're in that in-between time that they realize that they may need to pay the county back for those funds. We really, again, want to support those businesses that have not received anything first. Okay, gotcha. Um, <clears throat> what things would you recommend that businesses do uh, with their applications and so forth to make their uh, company look or, or to be more attractive as candidates to to help their chances of getting these funds? Um, I would just say, be honest. We tried to make the application review process as objective as we can. So we didn't have situations where uh, I like this company or this company is my friend. So I wanna try to, try, try to get them some help. Um, so it really is going to be based on that criteria where we're looking at how long the business has been open and operating, what their debt is, how many employees they have. Um, so as long as they completely fill out the application and they provide honest answers, um, then their, their vitality as a, as a business before COVID-19 will likely carry them through um, to uh, a, a positive outcome on the grant side. And and just just one thing to note is we're probably going to get more applications than we're able to to fill. And so in terms of how to fairly identify those grantees, uh, we we will likely end up in a situation where we have to go to a lottery for one or more of these programs. Okay. And then for those businesses as well, um, uh, Commissioner Jones mentioned it earlier. Uh, one of the things that we've done to help small businesses um, to prepare their applications if they're struggling or if they just need help understanding, um, we have a partnership with the Small Business Development Center at UNLV. And so as businesses um, look at the application or have questions about the application, um, maybe they have a question about, you know, um, how to identify W-2 employees, the Small Business Development Center, um, they are going to have business counselors on hand um, to help walk businesses. For some of the criteria. Yes, um, but they will also be able to provide them with other resources that may be available um, either uh, through the state or federally as well. So I think the partnership with uh, the Small Business Development Center at UNLV will be very uh, beneficial and helpful. And I encourage all small businesses um, if you know you, you feel uncomfortable because you've never filled out a grant application before, um, lean on the Small Business Development Center. They will help you through this process. Shannon, you don't uh, happen to have that number, do you? Oh, I don't off the top of my head. It will be on the website. So the website will include information directly related to Small Business Development Center. There will be a link on the website where they can uh, go directly to the Small Business Development Center's website, and there will also be a phone number where they can call. Okay, perfect. We'll also Thank include you. the information for legal aid, and I believe they're standing at their portion of the website in the next few days also. Yes. Okay, perfect, and, and we'll make sure to get this information on the Vegas Chamber website as well. Yes. So. Yes. Um, will month-to-month -month tenants be eligible for that rental grant as long as the landlord participates? Um, 
maybe that's one. Um, I may have skipped over that eligibility requirement, so I apologize if I did that. Um, it requires that you have a lease that does not expire before December 31st. So, um, so month to month, so, yeah, they, they have to have an active lease. So month to month would not qualify. Okay. All right. Very good. Um, you know, I just uh, appreciate your time today. Uh, you both have just been uh, so accessible to Vegas Chamber members. Commissioner Jones, Shawnee Coleman, you guys are just amazing and you've given us so much information and boy, Shawnee, I'm so impressed with your ability to come up with these three programs to assist our members and, and just business in general in Nevada. So thank you. Yeah, I, I mean, Commissioner Jones wants to give me the credit, but a lot of this was research, <laughs> looking at what other cities were doing. Um, the Small Business Stabilization Grant, um, you'll see a lot of that around the uh, country. Seattle is doing something like that. Long Beach is doing something like that. Dallas is doing something like that. So I really kind of uh, tried to steal the best from what's going on around the nation um, and, and bring it to Clark County, so. <laughs> Well, I think you've uh, succeeded in that. I do have one more question here that I want to get in, if you don't mind. Um, just to clarify, they say, I have an LLC that I opened in November of 2019, and we are paying a rent subleased of $1,000. I do not have employees, just 1099 contractors, and I have not paid myself $1 since opening the business. Can I get any help based on when my business was started? Um, they would have to have been in business six months prior to March 15th. And so I think that takes him back. I think he would need to, uh, that business would have had to have opened in October. So a business opening in November likely is not eligible. Darn, missed it by one yeah. month. Yeah. For the state foundation grant, I think they're still available for the other programs, right, Shoni? Um, the retrofit grant they're available for, um, but the stabilization grant and the rental assistance, they would not be available, would not be eligible for, I should say. Okay. All right. Excellent. Well, thank you again for all your help. Thank you for being so uh, available to us, and uh, we sure appreciate all your work and all your service to the business community throughout the state, Southern Nevada especially. Well, thank you for having me. I'm going to go ahead and jump off so I can jump on my other call. I apologize. I have to run. <laughs> Thanks, Shawnee. Thank Thanks, you. Shawnee. Commissioner Jones, uh, did you have any final remarks you'd like to make before we close today? No, I just I want to reiterate uh, the, my gratitude to the chamber for really being a partner with our community here, keeping businesses safe. I know uh, last week, uh, we picked up some of the signage that you guys had created for businesses in, in the southwest area of town. So really appreciate you guys and, and all that you guys are doing and, and look forward to continuing the partnership. Well, thank you so much. We appreciate you and thank you to all of our members uh, who are watching these webinars and learning about all the resources that uh, are, are being made available. So thank you again. Have a great rest of your day, Commissioner, and we'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Okay, bye everybody.